initiated and proposed the legislation that would eventually lead to mental health first aid training uh, funding under SAMHSA. Um, Tracy Warner works with Centerpoint and is a trainer here in North Carolina. She works very closely with Andy Kegler in the corner over here um, in training people mental health first aid in the Forsyth County area. And Jasma is our student, and there will be our panel for the day as she also completed the training. So you have the opportunity to learn about and experience and talk about mental health first aid training from policy to practice, quite literally. Um, so, without further ado, um, mental health first aid training, in a brief, very brief kind of way, is CPR for people with mental illness, mental disorders. So, like you heard in the video, like you heard me say in the video, when you have a CPR situation, when you cut your, when you cut your arm, or when you are having a seizure, or when you're having asthma attacks, or when you fall and hurt yourself, there is a way to handle it. There is a very specific ABC way of fixing the situation. If not, putting a band-aid on it, finding the right place to go to, fixing it. With mental illness, a lot of people will just walk away or freak out or make the situation worse by saying, are you crazy? Or like, what's wrong with you? Can't you yourself in control? Because it doesn't look the same. It doesn't feel the same. It's, it's not something we deal with. Stigma being what it is, we push it away. We run away from it and we don't like it. So this called first aid training was established in Australia originally because, of person, because one of the, the original um, Betty Kishner was li living with depression. And there was a time period where she almost had a successful, or a completed suicide attempt. And because of people who were more aware and who had, were able to talk to her and get her to the appropriate resources, she moved, lived on to get married and have a husband who together formed the first mental, mental health first aid training in Australia in 2000. And in 2013, Barber, Representative Barber um, introduced legislation that would introduce SAMHSA's organization to take over mental health first aid here. Um, and so you move into policy, and I will turn it over to Representative Barber to give himself an introduction and to talk about where he was. Um, so the first question was, Mr. Representative Barber, um, who are you and what is your connection to behavioral health? Well, my connection to behavioral health started with my work before I became the Congressman Gifford's district director. I was the uh, the regional administrator and then the state director of the Arizona Department of Developmental Disabilities. And our main focus was on people with mental retardation, epilepsy, uh, cerebral palsy, and uh, autism. About 40% of the people we served had a dual diagnosis. They also had a mental health diagnosis. So that was my first introduction to getting services outside of our own system and collaborating with the behavioral health system, which at first was hard to, to do because uh, the administrator of the system at that time was trying to parse out what percentage of the person's uh, needs were mental retardation or autism and what percentage were mental health, which is a ridiculous question. <laughs> uh, so finally we got an administrator who said, I don't care what percentage because you can't figure it out anyway. Let's just split it 50-50. So we collaborated on people with dual diagnosis on a 50-50 split, no matter what the, uh, the level of the uh, issue was. And that really began a very close collaboration with the behavioral health system, which lasted until I left the uh, Division of Development Disabilities and went to work on then-state senator, uh, soon to be congresswoman, Gabby Gifford's uh, first race for Congress in 2006. And, uh, just finished the, the narrative. Uh, I was her district director when she was elected. Uh, I served in that capacity until uh, she stepped down in 2012. I was with her the day of the shooting in January 8, 2011, standing right beside her when I was shot as well, um, shot twice. Uh, and uh, I was recuperating for a better part of a year. Gabby, uh, besides she wasn't going to run again, she encouraged me to do so. I won the special election and the general election. So in nine months, we had four elections, primary and general, uh, in 2012. And uh, I just uh, left Congress, uh, uh, lost my uh, seat at 167 votes out of 220,000. So let that be a lesson to you. Voting matters. Your vote matters a lot. And if 167 people show 
put up. So that's my background in mental health, behavioral health, and uh, I've served on uh, the boards of uh, local agencies that provide behavioral health services. Uh, in Arizona, uh, we have what is called a regional behavioral health authority system. The state is divided up into three or four different sections, each of which has an umbrella agency that provides services through networks that they contract with. And that is where I think uh, some of the most progressive work has been done, quite frankly, uh, in, the, in the country uh, since uh, those organizations came into effect. And one last thought about this. Our major funding for behavioral health in Arizona comes through Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to create a Medicaid program that was focused on community-based services, home and community-based services, as opposed to institutional services. Uh, as someone who worked hard during my uh, career in, in developmental facilities to get people out of state institutions, I wanted to make sure that we did everything we could to keep people out of state institutions if they had a behavioral health problem or issue, recognizing that sometimes inpatient care is needed. But I believe, and I, I know it's true, that we can do a much better job if we provide home and community-based services, if we engage the community in helping uh, support the person with a mental health issue. That includes family and friends, uh, the person at the coffee shop that you go to, whoever, whatever it is. And so we started a process called uh, person-centered planning where the person with disabilities is really at the center, as the name implies, of the planning process. It's their team. And they bring into that team professionals and friends and relatives and neighbors and people with just their hair and all the rest. To, to, to have a much better system for community support in addition to the therapeutic support that uh, a person gets from a mental health profession. So well, that's, that's, all a, that's a great uh, connection. Um, I will say one additional note that I've learned about uh, Mr. Barber today is that he also began dealing with symptoms of PTSD as a result of the shooting, and so he is firsthand experiencing mental health. Um, that a lot of us who are either working in the field or live in the field live with as well. Um, so he is even that much more connected. Tracy Warner, where, as I said earlier, works for CenterPoint. And so who are you and what is your connection to behavioral health? Well, I am the Consumer Affairs Specialist for CenterPoint Human Services. And CenterPoint Human Services is a managed care organization slash local management entity. And I have been there um, 20 years. Um, I actually graduated um, undergraduate uh, with a social work degree here at, at UNCG, um, not here, but at UNCG uh, in 1991, and um, went to work at the local mental health center in Winston-Salem, um, and at that time we were providing direct services, and then we had, you know, uh, trans transition to become a local management entity where we be um, became a uh, manager and overseer of providers in our network, um, and now we're a managed care organization as well. What I do at CenterPoint, um, of course, along the way over those 20-some years, it's been very different. I've done um, case management. Um, I've worked with individuals that have uh, severe and persistent mental illness, um, primarily work with adults. Uh, I help people get out of the state hospital. Um, I worked on an assertive treatment community team, um, and uh, so I've done a variety of different things. Uh, at the LME slash MCO um, side of things, I went back and got my master's degree in MSW, um, and I um, inform people about their rights as consumers. Um, anytime there's a client right issue, they may, uh, people at this agency may ask me, what do you think about this? Or, um, is, does this seem like this is a problem? Or if someone needs some advocacy in the way of client rights, they feel like maybe the provider is um, stepping on their rights, uh, that kind of thing. I inform um, people how to access services, so I'm out in the community um, informing people about how to access services, um, how to navigate things which can be very fragmented. Um, and I was even hearing a little bit about today some questions in one of the uh, breakout sessions that I was earlier. But in regards to mental health first aid, in 2014, um, I went, I was selected by the agency where I worked to go and get the training 
for mental health first aid. In fact, um, I was in the first group in North Carolina uh, to become trained in youth mental health first aid, um, which was very exciting. And then I went back and got the adult mental health first aid. I'm also certified to teach uh, mental health first aid in uh, higher education, which is for college campuses, and also veterans, uh, for those who have, are veterans and family members of veterans. And there's also another curriculum that I'm certified in that is um, law enforcement. So uh, I'm excited, very passionate about it, um, and it has been with the collaboration of Andy Heckler uh, at the Mental Health Association in Forsyth County. Uh, that has partnered with us to help us uh, get the uh, trainings out in the community uh, to the very people that need it. And um, on two points about that, for those that you may not know, the LME MCO is a, is a fun little acronym that we can throw out. And this is actually might be a, you, are you had LME MCO situations in Arizona? What are those acronyms? Uh, license, uh, local management. Local management entity and managed care organization. I don't, we probably have those functions, but yeah. uh, they, it's a, the Regional Behavioral Health Authority, uh, which receives the Medicaid and some mm -hmm. state funding, yeah. then administers yeah. that through yeah, local that's, networks. That's what we different do. Names, well, it, I feel like it's a little bit different in the sense that we have nine of them. Is it nine now? Right. We have nine of them in the state, these LME and COs. Center Point is Winston and West, a little bit west of that. Um, in Greensboro, we have Sand Hills. Raleigh has Cardinal. Um, and what they do is they get the Medicaid money and they have their people that they license, and, or not license, but they will say that you're, a, you're one of our providers. They produce it. Yeah. Um, and so they will be the people you can go to and get Medicaid services that the M MCOs have approved. Um, on the second side of that was out of my head. So, Jasmine, um, <laughs> who are you and what is your connection with your health? Um, so, like you said before, I am a BFW student at UNCG. Um, my area of social work, um, that's my major, social work. Uh, my area is um, with children, youth, and school-age children. So, um, with being a social worker, I want to... Go ahead. I want to always be able to be literate and be able to um, provide the best services for my children. And so, with um, behavioral mental health, it, like like they said earlier, it touches everyone, and so with becoming literate about that and learning about it, I will be able to extend services and provide them with help that they may need. Um, on the flip side of that, I also have a mother who's dealing with depression, and so um, going to the mental health training really opened up my eyes and helped me um, better assist my mom. Um, I feel a lot closer to her, and... Um, uh, I just feel, I just feel like going through that training really helped me see her side of things and be able to relate to her and, you know, help her because at lo lots of times I felt like I wasn't any help. So I feel happy to have had the um, training and everything like that. So yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, our next questions, I went through the mental health first aid training as well, so when we move into the question side of it, I'll kind of sort of join the panel as a stu another student, um, and also as a conversation point about what Jasmine and I will present at the end. Um, the next questions are individual. Um, so one of the cool things about this panel, and one thing that we don't often get to do, is see a project quite literally go from policy to implementation in everybody's lives, with the teaching in the middle. Um, this is, as few of you that actually transitioned across the quad, um, this is a rare opportunity for all of you to really dive into how this looks from conception to inception. Um, so with that in mind, Representative Barber, how did this legislation come about and where are we currently with the policy? Well, in my case, uh, my focus on mental health first aid uh, really came out of the shooting. Uh, what I learned in due course was the, that the shooter, in our case, um, who killed six people, uh, wounded 13 others, uh, myself and the congresswoman included. What I learned later was that this was a young man who had been undiagnosed and untreated for mental illness. He, um, 
had been showing signs of significant mental uh, health problems for at least two years before the shooting. Um, he was acting in bizarre ways at school, the college he went to. He was um, actually expelled from the community college and told he couldn't go back without a psychological evaluation. Uh, he had posted uh, bizarre messages on, on uh, uh, Facebook. And um, everyone around him, his parents, his fellow students, his friends, his teachers, something wasn't right. Uh, and yet, they didn't really know what they were saying. Um, they just thought he's just being strange. And this was a behavior.